station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Absolutely, we are ready for the event. Fox News Channel, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Fox News Channel. How do you hear me? Fox News, we got you loud and clear. Welcome aboard the International Space Station. Great, thank you so much. Uh, I've done many interviews before at NASA headquarters, but never in outer space. So I'd like to know what it's like, um, Commander Wilmore and Commander Wirtz, what it's like in space day to day. Oh, day to day, it's it's absolutely fantastic. There's a great deal of work. Obviously, uh, our days are scheduled pretty much start to finish. We start with a, co a planning conference. We end with a planning conference for the next day's events, and and pretty much most of the day is scheduled between that. We have workouts scheduled. We have uh, different experiments scheduled. We have maintenance scheduled, and so it's fairly busy. But uh, you know, not many places that you can go to work and you can just float around and do these type of things. So uh, it makes it very special, very special indeed. Great. Um, how about for you, Commander? Well, I, I'll uh, I'll agree with Butch. It, it's a busy day from basically the morning you wake up until uh, nighttime. Today we're scheduled from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. And uh, so it's work, work, work. And then you, when you can, you take a minute to relax. Today I was working out on the... Um, the machine we call A-RED, doing my exercise, and I looked up and saw that we were flying over India. So I ran and grabbed a camera and took a few pictures of the Taj Mahal. And then a few minutes later, we were flying over the Himalayas, and I was trying to get a picture of Mount Everest. A few minutes later, we were flying over the deserts of central China, which are just amazing. And then a couple minutes later, it was time to get back to work because I had to move on to some maintenance tasks that we're doing to reconfigure the station. So it's basically a lot of work punctuated by some really amazing things like getting to float like this or see the beautiful Earth or stars. So it's a pretty, it's a pretty fun and busy time. Wow, that is amazing. I wanted to know because I know in about a month or so, um, there, uh, the year-long venture to space is going to start. What are your thoughts on spending an entire year in space, and um, would you do it? Thoughts on spending a year in space. You know, there's a lot of uh, information we can get from the human body and uh, what a year, uh, the effects of a year in space weightlessness will do to it. And that's very interesting science. And that's, of course, one of the main objectives for the year-long mission coming up. Would I do it? Uh, absolutely, I would do it. However, uh, there are certain caveats. You know, we're up here for six months. We're really actually away from home for almost a full eight-month period from start to finish. And that, of course, begins two and a half years before we launch with the training all around the globe. So we're actually gone from our homes over half the time uh, during that three-year period. So that's a big sacrifice. It's actually not a huge sacrifice on us. We're traveling around the world, seeing, meeting a lot of people, doing some interesting things. The biggest sacrifice is on the family. So for me personally, I've got a seven-year-old and a 10-year-old, and, and my number one responsibility is as a husband and a father. So for me right now to go for a year and, and add another six months to, to that would be, would be hard because, you know, uh, the little girls need their daddy, and uh, obviously uh, daddies need their little girls too. So that might be tough. <laughs> How about you, Commander Verts? Well, I agree with Butch. Um, what we get to do as astronauts is the fun thing. We get to ride on the rocket and be in space, and it's definitely uh, the difficulty and the, and the real heroes are our families that support us and allow us to do this. It's a lot of time spent away. Um, uh, like Butch was saying, but you know, it's there's thousands of our troops that do very similar deployments and do even for years beyond what we do. So the sacrifice that we do is there, especially for our families. But it's not without uh, parallel across our country. There's lots of people that sacrifice even more. That's great. I I wanted to ask you because I have an eighth grader, and you know, we're doing the science experiment time. What about the experiments there? You know, how many are going on at one time? Is there like a favorite or a most interesting for each of you? Well, first of all, bless you and uh, good luck. We'll pray for you having an eighth grader. I've got some teenagers myself. And uh, second of all, the science that we do here is pretty cool. And it's very, it's varied. It's not the same science experiment every day. Um, we have right next to me, Robonaut. He's buttoned up right now. It's a big giant robot that we've been working on inside and hopefully eventually he'll be able to go out, outside and do uh, spacewalk type of activities to help us out. We've got, um, over here, we're doing a material science experiment in the glove box, and we do some biology experiments there. We've done, uh, I was doing a plant growth experiment this morning. And so basically every type of science that there is, uh, there's a, the computers that run 
uh, particle detector that's out on the outside of the space station that's helping to discover what the universe is made out of. So every type of science that there is, we get to do or at least be involved in a small way. Now, um, Captain Wilmore and I are both pilots. We're just fighter pilots, and we kind of do what the scientists need us to do. But it is a lot of fun to be involved in so much varied science. Great. Do you have a favorite, Captain Wilmore? Uh, it, that would be very difficult. Like uh, like Colonel Virch said, we do so many varied things and be involved with so many things. Very important science. Uh, these uh, various folks around the globe putting uh, their heart and soul into much of what we have our hands on. And so uh, we feel the we feel the stress, if you will, at times to make sure we get things and, and get it done right. So and that's that's the pleasure in it. I couldn't pick one. That would be that would be very difficult and actually impossible to do. They're all very interesting and and uh, and exciting. Uh, the same. <laughs> What is um okay? So the, what is the weirdest or the funniest thing that's happened to you in space? I don't know if that's uh, <laughs> I'm sure uh, a lot of things have happened in space. You know, I, I can. A lot of things have happened. In space. I, I, the, maybe not funny, but the the strangest thing, at least for me, is I've got a pretty hefty appetite, and when <laughs> I'm on Earth, I really got to watch it because I can you know, I can blow up pretty quick. Uh, but here, for whatever reason, I don't know if it's the work pace, the environment, I'm not sure what it is, but uh, our metabolisms are, are higher. And I could, I can eat, I, I don't think I could, I could eat continuously and, and still not gain weight. And that is strange. My body is not that way, like I said, on Earth, but here, and I've heard that from many other my uh, astronaut uh, uh, folks as well say very similar things that the, you know, the, the metabolism is what it is and you can really, really pack it away. <laughs> Wow. What about, um, I, I didn't wow. ask you this, just last week they had the, um, you know, SpaceX was going to try to land um, the reusable rocket. I know the seas were too rough. What do you think of their efforts, you know, to create a reusable launch vehicle? Well, that's an important thing. Actually, we have a visual of what SpaceX did for us. The, the front of the space station there used to be full of bags of equipment and uh, some science research that had to be sent back to Earth and clothing and all kinds of stuff and 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 for the first time and as long as anybody can remember we can actually see that front hatch because it all got sent back to earth which is great and uh, of course one of the main goals of SpaceX and a lot of the other companies that are involved in NASA's commercial efforts the goal is to reduce the launch costs and uh, get make getting into space cheaper if getting into space is cheaper then we can do a lot more in space so that's very important uh, it's an important part of our future uh, that we're doing as a country Fantastic. Okay, I know my time is running short here, so I, uh, you know, since you talked about family, I have to f ask about Valentine's Day. Anything? How are you keeping in touch with your family? Are you sending a special uh, bouquet of roses? When's, I can't. When's, special, uh, when's Valentine's Day? Uh oh, tomorrow. Uh -oh. <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> Thanks for the reminder. <laughs> um, no, of course we're keeping in touch. We have. Uh, the ability to make phone calls when, when we have the right amount of satellite coverage. And we the NASA sets up a weekly video conference for us. Of course, there's email that we can e uh, email our friends and family with. So there is, uh, it's not like being home at all, but it, there is a lot, of, uh, a lot of ability to contact your family. You know, I think about my grandparents when they were in World War II and um, had a couple of grandfathers on both sides of the family that went off and three years later came back and never had a phone call or a visit or anything. And so the amount of contact we have today with our families is pretty amazing. That's great. And, and for yourself, uh, Commander, is there any last thoughts or anything else you'd like to say? No, I tell you what, uh, the support of the American public, the people, the, the thousands of people across this, uh, our great nation, that put their, their passion and soul into, into what we do, a lot of what we do. And, and, and it's, uh, it's a great benefit to mankind. And we appreciate, of course, all of them. And uh, it's, a, it's a great thing that we do for our nation as we come together and work together for these uh, uh, great accomplishments. And they are great indeed. Great. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it and for your work there in space. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the Fox News Channel portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from Fox America's News Headquarters. Okay. Mm-hmm. I am.
Is this a voice check? Or is this a... It, Commander Wilmore. Can yes, you Fox hear me, News, sir? we're with you loud this and clear. Uma Pemaraju. This is this is Uma Pemaraju. Yes, Uma, we've got you loud and clear. Oh great. You guys look fabulous up there. Well, that's very kind. We we wish we could see you, but obviously we're staring into a camera right now. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Um we're going to be ready to go in just a second. We'll be ready when you are. Thank you, sir. Okay. Here we go. Welcome, gentlemen. It's great to see you, and it looks like you're having lots of fun up there at the space station. Oh, absolutely. This is a great place to have fun. There's no doubt. Things, obviously, that you can do here, you cannot do anywhere else. No doubt about that. Commander Wilmore, there's so much going on at the International Space Station at the moment. Give us a sense of what it's like to work in the zero gravity and conduct many important experiments. Oh, my, that is, a, that is an interesting question. It is, uh, it's, like I said, it's fabulous. Uh, it's busy, absolutely busy. We're scheduled uh, pretty much 12 hours a day to include two and a half hours of physical activity, you know, working out, uh, doing aerobic and anaerobic exercise. Uh, but other than that, it's, uh, it's maintenance task, it's science, it's a go, go, go pretty much all day, every day. And obviously it's Friday. We're glad it's Friday. We get a weekend as well. And uh, I, I there's many weeks that we, uh, we've worked hard and we feel like we deserve that weekend. And this past one was one of them. Wow. Uh, Perry, one of the key areas that's being tested is the effects of microgravity on cells along with studying the long-term impact of zero gravity on the human body. Wouldn't you say this is a, a critical uh, experiment, particularly if man hopes to go to Mars and beyond? Absolutely. That's one of the most important uh, functions that the space station performs is showing that people can live, work, and thrive in space. And more importantly, uh, when they get back to Earth, uh, come back in good shape. And we've been demonstrating that for 15 years now. We're doing a lot of uh, human experiments with an ultrasound machine, um, some various scanners that they use to look at our brain, our heart, our eyes. And uh, it seems like uh, every week somebody is getting scanned in some way. So seeing how our bodies react and adapt to space uh, is very important and of course with the 15 years of space station and uh, space stations like Mir and Skylab and others before it we've shown that people really can live and work and function in space for a long period of time and of course that's what we need to be able to do if we're going to go on to Mars and even beyond. You know, uh, Commander Wilmar, you've already been in space now for uh, many months, and you return back to Earth uh, next month. What impact so far has this had on your body? And as you pointed out, you do exercise, and that's part of the requirement, isn't it, to exercise every day on board the space station? It, it is. You know, what effects has it had? I, you know, we'll find that out when I get back. And we do work out every single day. I've only missed two days of working out since I've been here. And I've been here for four and a half months. And those two days were days that we had spacewalks back in October. So it is uh, every single day. And it, uh, and it does make a difference. I feel I'm actually stronger now as far as uh, weight I'm able to lift on our exercise device than when I arrived. I may be stronger now than I've been about any time in my life because of that continual working out. And also, uh, you know, we're able to, for whatever reason, we're able to eat here. And uh, when I really don't gain weight, we have to actually eat more than we normally do to maintain our weight. And I guess that combination of, of putting all those uh, nutrients in our, into our bodies, uh, more so than what, what I usually do or am able to do on Earth, or I'll gain a lot of weight, and then also the working out, it's keeping us fit. And, uh, and uh, the numbers, we'll, we'll see what the numbers say, but if it's like some others that have gone before us, uh, those numbers should be pretty good. You know, Terry, I recently interviewed uh, Scott Kelly, who plans to break a record by living in space for a year, and he'll be joining you and your team uh, next month. What do you expect may be some of the biggest challenges that he will face? 
Yeah, we're looking forward to seeing Scott and Misha and also Gennady Padalka arrive uh, in about a month, month and a half. Uh, I think the biggest challenge for a year, of course, there's the effects on your body. Uh, we understand those pretty well. It'll be interesting to see how that how they do after a year. There's only been a few other flights uh, that the Russians did on the Mir space program uh, a few decades ago. But the biggest challenge, and, and Butch mentions this a lot, is the requirement to concentrate so intently all day, every day on everything you do. You really have to pay attention to everything you do here. There's a lot of detail in the procedures that we work. And I think the psychological aspects of the year uh, is going to be a bigger challenge and, and probably more interesting results um, even than the physiological uh, event, uh, challenges will be. Uh, you know, on a personal note, Commander Wilmore, uh, as I understand it, you and Terry were both hooked on the idea of space travel ever since you were youngsters. What was it that actually inspired you to follow through with your dreams? Was it those early images of the space pioneers who landed on the moon? And give us a sense of the majesty of what it's like to watch the Earth high above, far, far away, and the whole idea of being in a universe with endless boundaries, with no boundaries. Now, that is an interesting couple of questions there. Um, uh, inspired me. I was inspired by many things. You know, I was, uh, I can remember my youngest uh, uh, memory was being inspired by the garbage man because he could lift that garbage can and put it up on his shoulder. And uh, from that, you know, just being inspired to, 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 to be strong and physically. And then, you know, what you see would take place on television during those early Apollo years. Um, that was obviously certainly inspiring. So it wasn't just those events. It was many events, many people throughout my life that uh, really inspired me to do the best with what the good Lord gave me. And that's that's the main thing for me. And you mentioned looking outside. Oh, I, when I did the, the spacewalk back in October and looking through that visor and not having dust or air particles or humidity in the air to inhibit the flow of light and being able to see so clear for so far thousands of miles uh, I, it's no way really to put it into words there's no way that you can take a picture or a video to show it it's just uh, it's uh, epic it's awe-inspiring truly truly amazing Perry for you do you share those similar experiences as well I do uh, you know the first book I read in kindergarten was about Apollo and uh, as a kid, my mom, my dad, my stepdad, they all worked at the Goddard Space Flight Center. Um, my mom was a secretary there. My dad was a technician there. And so I was always interested in space. Growing up, my, my walls were covered with space pictures and airplane pictures. I even had an F-16 uh, picture. Uh, as a kid, I eventually ended up going on to fly F-16. So it's been something that I was just interested in since, since I was a little boy. Um, but seeing the Earth, you know, I wish I could describe it. Um, unfortunately, we're fighter pilots and we're not poets, and you just can't put words to what you see. It takes your breath away. And so we, we take a lot of pictures, and there, we have Twitter accounts, and you can see the pictures that we take every day. Um, and even the, the pictures are amazing, but they still, they still can't do what you actually, when you look down on creation, they just can't do it justice. Absolutely. Well, gentlemen, you are obviously on the adventure of a lifetime. I wish I could join you up there. It's absolutely wonderful. You're part of an elite fraternity of amazing astronauts. We wish you all the best and safe travels. Uh, those are really kind words, Uma. Thank you very much. And y'all have, have a great day, a great Valentine's Day tomorrow to all. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you. Thank you, Fox News Channel and Fox America's News Headquarters Station. We are now resuming operational audio communications.